QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Reversing Entry, Unearned Revenue, Customer Deposit. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars homepage. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the View dropdown, selecting the open windows list. We're going to be opening up our reports, going to the banking dropdown, on to the reports dropdown, company and financial down to the balance sheet standard, changing the date up top to 022821. Then we'll open up the P&L profit and loss by going to the reports dropdown, company and financial profit and loss, changing the dates from 010121 to 0202 And then I'm going to go back to the balance sheet. We had the reversing entries that we entered in in a prior presentation, which was to uh, to account for the fact that we had a negative receivable and recorded the the uh, liability of the unearned revenue. So to see that more clearly, let's take a look at the receivable, the 14172. Go to the reports up top. We're going to go to the customers and receivable. Take a look at the customer balance detail report, changing the dates up top from 010121 to 022821. And then scrolling down, we then have the 14172. On the balance sheet, we have the 14172. And then we see on the customer balance detail that we have this negative receivable that we had that is good logistically as we see in the prior presentation but is a problem in terms of reporting purposes so we reversed it last time and now we're going to um, we we made an adjusting entry to increase the receivable and record the undeposited fund the liability resulting in this transaction the adjusting entry which is weird because normally you don't have a journal entry in this in this report right and so that's you can tell that's an adjusting entry now we're going to reverse it as of the first day of the next time period. So it's back to where it should be logistically. We did that with a journal entry over here in Excel. So this is what the journal entry will look like. We simply reversed exactly what the adjusting entry was. And that takes us back to where we should be. So we had the accounts receivable. We adjusted it and then we reversed it. Remember, there's two things that are in here right now. These two transactions. But 300 is part of that transaction that's happening. And then down here on the on the uh, unearned revenue, same thing. We increased it, and then we're going to decrease it back down to zero. Let's do that uh, with a journal entry, just keeping in mind that with the receivable, that we have the one logistical kind of problem, and that we want to make sure that we assign the proper customer, or else QuickBooks will not let us record it. Also note that we can use either a journal entry in QuickBooks or a register but the register for accounts receivable is a little bit more difficult to use because it's kind of linked to the customers. So I'm going to use the unearned revenue register to record it. So back to QuickBooks, you could record this with debits and credits by going to the company dropdown, make uh, a journal entry, recording just a journal entry in debits and credits, or you can go to the register, which would be in the lists dropdown, chart of accounts. I'm not going to go into the receivable register because again, it's linked to the customers and therefore it's a little bit more confusing I, I, so I'm going to go down to the other register, which will, will not be linked to anything. And that's going to be the unearned revenue. So let's double click on the unearned revenue. It's also kind of a little bit more clear to see this one because you can see this this transaction was entered um, uh, and, and it's the only thing there. So we got to reverse it. We got to bring it back down to zero. So it's going to happen as of the first day of the next time period, right after the cutoff date. That's what a reversing entry does. And then we're going to decrease this by the 300 and the other side is going to go to the accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is the other side. And I'm going to call this a reversing entry. Now, I, if I try to record it now, the system most likely will not let me because I didn't assign a customer. So let's just check that out. I'm going to say record. It says, uh, please choose a customer when using the accounts receivable. So I can't do it because if I recorded something to accounts receivable without, the reg without assigning a customer, the sub ledger would be off. So I'm going to say, okay. And then you might say, well, I have no place to put a customer. Where am I supposed to put the customer? Well, you will, if you hit the splits button down here, then you can add the customer and memo. So I'm going to say reversing, reversing entry. And the customer is going to be string music. I believe it was string music. And then I'll record that and let's check it out. We could double click on the transaction then. And, and here it is. So we have a, uh, a debit to unearn and, the, and a credit to the accounts receivable. So is that what we have here? 
Yeah, debit to unearned credit in the accounts receivable. Opposite order, but that's okay. Closing this back out in terms of up and down, you know, one on top and bottom. They're in the right columns. That's what matters. So I'm going to close this back out. And notice when we look at that, why did they put the columns on top? Because we're in the register for the unearned revenue. So they put that one on top. That's why they put it on top when you go into here. You see, you see unearned revenue on, on top. So I'm going to close this back out. Close this back out. Uh, close this back out. And then let's go to the balance sheet. So now within the balance sheet, if I go to the accounts receivable, uh, double clicking on it, we see our, our detail for the 300 uh, here. If I then go one date higher to the third, uh, to, three thir to three one, then we see our, our other transaction, the reversing entry. So we had it in. We had it in there uh, at the beginning. It was the uh, accounts receivable was in there as a negative. Now I'm going to bring this back so I can see it on on 010121. So it was a negative on 221. There's the 300, and and so that was and then we reversed it so it was correct as of the cutoff date on the end of the month 228, and then we reversed it back so it's back to a negative here as of the first date after the cutoff date. So I'm gonna close this back out. If I change the date here, uh, let's go back to the balance sheet. I'm on the balance sheet. If I change the date here to the next day up on 3-1, so now we're down, we're back to the 13-473. If I go back to our our uh, Excel sheet, we started at 13-473, and now we're back to that 13-473 after we reversed them, this including both those transactions. There's two transactions here. So we're at the 13-473. If I go then to the customer detail report, and I update the date to the first day of the next month after the cutoff date, then we see this transaction happening again. So now we're back to where we should be. We're at the 13-473 total. And then when we when we think about this with the accounting department, the normal accounting process, we we had this negative amount here that normally we would match up against a payment that I mean against an invoice that we would put in later, and then we did this journal entry to make it right, bringing it down to zero, uh, but but we never got the payment, and now we have it in basically undeposited funds, which isn't linked to this account at all. That's a problem. That's why it was in there in the first place. So we reversed it back out on 3-1, the day after the cutoff date. So now we're back to having that negative 300. And these two, we can tell basically ourselves or the accounting department, hey, look, ignore these two transactions. They're just going to net each other out. And then you're back to where you originally were with that 300. And you can tie out that credit balance, that 300 to the invoice when you create the invoice in the future, when you get the guitar that the customer put a down payment on prior to this. So then the other side, if we go back to the balance sheet, will of course be back down to zero in terms of the unearned revenue. So it's gone again. If you want to see that account, you can go to the trial balance, go into the reports drop down, the company and financial. Let's take a, actually the accounting and taxes. Take a look at the trial balance, changing the dates up top from 010121 to 022821. And so then we should have a liability here for the unearned uh, revenue. So there it is. And then if I change the date to one period up, 3-1, now it's going to be gone, right? So now it's gone, unearned revenue. If I double click on that zero, then we see that it, it went up and then it went back down again. So here's where we stand at this point in time. We'll take a look at the balance sheet. Here's where we are in terms of the balance sheet. So you can check your numbers if you're following along. And then the Profit and loss, here's where we are in terms of the profit and loss, the PNL, the income statement. And then here's where we stand in terms of the trial balance.